Welcome to The Shooting Show. This week, we return to Ayrshire, where Chris Dalton guides our cameraman, Byron Pace's better half, onto a roebuck. Plus, we bring you all the latest news from the shooting world. Chris Dalton is back. He's after Roebuck in South Ayrshire with novice stalker and cameraman Byron Pace's better half, Beth. Just a reminder, we'll just sort of quickly show you the rifle. It's the one we used on the range earlier on, so you know about the safety aspect and keeping the bolt open. I'll carry the rifle uh, today. Uh, we'll be loaded, as I explained earlier on. You know, we're going to walk along the top of the, the field side there. We've got a nice valley with some gorse bushes on a banking just down the slope here, which you can't see. Yeah. Now, I, I was out here this morning, there's a couple of cull row books, which at the far end of this bank, and there's no guarantee they're going to be there now, but they were That's certainly hanging true. around this morning, we didn't disturb them. And then I backed off, there's also quite a nice book down in the bottom of the glen. The wind's not too bad, it's changed a little bit from this morning, but it's blowing across the valley, it's slightly against us, but because we're coming from a position on high, mm -hmm. we can walk along the top of the banking and kind of glass down. And then if we've got a deer down there, we can probably engineer a position where we can come round into shot. Yeah. Just to use Oscar as a bit of a guide, the, the shot point on a roebuck is, is here. So we're going to come straight up the back of the leg. And basically the heart is in this area, so that's really where the crosshairs want to be. Um, I'm not one for, for, I don't like headshots in deer at all. It's too fraught with danger. Yeah. It's a mobile, as we discussed, it's a mobile target, manoeuvrable. Um, next shot on red deer. Again, we discussed it, it's something that we might be an option, but on row, I think the safest thing, centre of the body mass. Yeah. We're going to wait for the deer to be in a nice sort of right angle broadside position, mm -hmm. and then the shot sort of in exactly in that position. Stalking, um, you want to be two or three paces behind me, and when I stop, you stop. Yeah. Any closer than that, it starts to push the dog a little bit forward, okay. and if you further away than that, if sometimes you can get into deer in these environments quite closely. Mm -hmm. um, the average range of a row shot in the sort of woodland environment would probably be 60 to 70 metres. So at that range, I don't want you like 15 metres behind because I'll kind of put the sticks up and kind of looking around for you and you're rap rapidly trying to gain ground and the deer's gone, okay? Right. The deer are not harried here, so it's not the sort of thing that they sort of see a person or whatever and shoot off exit stage left. But having said that, neither are they daft. Um, <laughs> They never are. <laughs> they never are, no. Our eyesight is better than the deer. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the one, the one advantage we've got is the binoculars. Yes. So we're using them a lot. They see movement. So what we've got to try and do is keep the movement sort of very slow and deliberate along the lines of a big cat, the way it moves. I'm not, we're not crawling around, you know what I mean? But it's fairly, it's, a, it's what I would say, kind of a drifting movement rather than a stop, start, stop, start. Yeah. And we'll go very steadily. Initially, we're out of sight. There's cows in the field over here. Highly unlikely we're going to get any deer in there. So we will make quite good progress till we get to the point where I want to drop down the valley. Okay. And we say we're just going to drift along the top edge and we've got a real good vantage point from there. So hopefully we can see deer. Yeah. Now I know you've not used sticks before. Mm -hmm. It's been on the bipod. So the sort of ground we're on, it's probably quite likely that we may be able to use the bipod. Yeah. However, if we're close into deer, the easiest thing to do is kind of deploy the sticks. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to set you up on the sticks and just show you Best position to be in with this is a nice, comfortable, it's a bit like a shotgun stance. Yeah. Um, nice and balanced, roughly the level with, you, with your shoulder. You can put this hand and control the sticks. A lot of people want to kind of hold the sticks like that or hold the rifle like that. Probably better if you can actually hold the sticks hold and the rifle yeah. and pull the rifle into your shoulder and that's stable shooting position. Okay, you can control, because, because I'm pulling the rifle into my shoulder, I've got control of it, which means I can free this hand. If you find that, when I set it up, I don't quite set the, the, the height and it's uncomfortable. Yeah. You just walk forward and it'll drop down. Okay. Or pull it back into your shoulder and it'll come up. Okay. And if you still can't get that comfortable position, keep hold of the rifle, but just push the sticks up a little bit. Mm -hmm. 
there's no such thing as a perfect shot. There's always going to be movement, but if you do exactly as you did on the range and you've shot deer before, you just control your breathing, keep everything nice and steady and don't jerk the trigger. It's got to be a gentle sort of squeeze of the trigger. Just keep control with that hand and just lift that hand off. Just get used to keeping the rifle pulled into your shoulder so you can then operate bolt and operate, you could operate a magazine. Okay, right then, we'll um, get some ammunition, load up and we'll see how we get on. Instruction on a day like this is paramount, but soon they're out glassing for bucks. The valley that we're really interested in is down below there, so we can move up here, out of sight completely, yeah, right down the bottom. There's a, there's a stream runs through the bottom, uh, and a gorse bank up here, and the deer love gorse, uh, they, they love to lie in it. It's quite open in the bottom, and the old gorse leaves create a carpet, so it's quite comfortable for them. And we don't go into gorse bushes. Uh, for obvious reasons, it's really quite, they're very rarely disturbed, so gorse, big patches of gorse is usually a good, a good holding area for deer and then as the evening wears on and it sort of drops down to dust, they can move out and drop down into the feeding areas. Because we've got, um, because we've got cattle now in those two pasture fields there, the fields on the right with no cattle in the ones where the deer are going to tend to light up and then this steep banking. Um, which is really a good holding area for deer. It's windy still coming a little bit this way, it should pick up and come across, but again, because we're up on the valley, it's kind of taking us that way. So it gives us the opportunity to, to drop down. So as long as we maintain a fairly high position on the bank, you know, we've got advantage so the deer won't hopefully wind us. And it also gives us the opportunity to look right into this cover. It'd be hard to pick deer that are laid up in there from this position, but once we get down onto that banking edge, so it's the sort of conditions that I like for road stalking. I prefer a little bit more wind, it just, it's just a bit flat. Your noise will carry a long way, you're not going to get away with anything. I'll try and show you places on here where the um, books have been marking because they're getting territorial now. So one of the things I'm looking for is, is signs of a territorial book because they're hefted to an area. So it's kind of an indication that you've got got an active book effectively. He's marking to warn off other books. I know for a fact there are two cool books in here which are small two and four pointers which are the deer I'd really like to shoot from this patch and there is one very big territorial book down the bottom end. Now whether he'll push up this far or not I don't know and those are the deer I know about there are clearly there'll be others. It's not long before Chris spots a deer in the gorse and broom. You see that kind of grey sheen on the back that's just the last remnants of the hair coming out. He starts to put his nose up and then when he goes on point, I know we're really close. It's unlikely that there'll be a book around just in that area because they're very wary of, of the males when they've got young followers. And what we'll do, we'll, we'll cut down and we'll get over this fence and then we'll, we'll work back along there. We're quite lucky actually because the, the bracken's just starting to come here. And I think with the season being so cold, it's quite late growing. Another week or so, you're not going to be able to see those deer in that. You know, it's going to be up here. Chris spies a book, but it doesn't stay in sight for long. There's a deer fence around that small copse there. So I'm going to go and have a look over there and just see where that book's gone. That little area's deer fence, I can't have gone anywhere other than down through this gap, so just, we'll just wait if there's a bit of interaction going on, we'll just see if that creates any more. Although the book is obscured, Oscar sends him. He's double back. It's the dog that indicated, I and mean, he's obviously picked our wind up, he's crossed us and jumped over. Right, that deer's still in that crop over there, so I'm not sure what that is. It's a tricky stalk for Beth and Chris as their book is wary, but finally they crawl into a position where he won't win their approach. Now ultimately, the decision on taking the shot is yours. Okay. I don't give a monkeys. Right. Okay, I'll just say to you, okay, that's a suitable animal. If you're mm -hmm. comfortable, the position's right, because I'm kind of stood just next to your ear. Yeah. If you want to take the shot, fine. Don't be pressured into it. Don't feel you've got to, because you haven't. Mm -hmm. That deer can walk off. Okay. You're not in any, you know, no pressure at all. Yeah. Um, that's assuming we find one, which <laughs> is no guarantee.
gone past it, I think. He's got it. Good lad. Good lad. Good lad. Show me. Mm. Stangled a bit there. Well, a six pointer. Beautiful. Beautiful robot. Well done. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks very much. Thank you, Oscar. Okay, kidneys, Oscar. Kidneys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a lovely robot, isn't it? I was aiming here. So yeah, I think where the end, it might be slight out. angled on the entry. The, the entry might be perfect. We'll have a look in a bit. The flighty book turns out to be a small six pointer. Its speedy route up the slope towards the hidden stalkers really tested Beth's metal. And thing with books is, especially if you get a bit territorial, they. They don't stand as much, they tend to be constantly moving mm. and it, it does make it difficult. And then it's coming closer and closer and you're thinking, oh heck, it's going to walk onto me. And you don't realise how close they are sometimes either. It was 120 yards to start with and Let's then see. probably, it can't be much more than 60. Not far. Get that back in, in the chiller. <laughs> That'll be nice when it's cleaned off yeah. and bleached. Beth getting her book there. And now, the Shooting Show News. This is the Shooting Show News. The Clay Shooting Classic is here. The biggest sporting event on the calendar begins on Wednesday and goes all the way through to Saturday, when we'll find out who'll be crowned high gun and leave with the Zolly Z Extra Sport. There are also hats and guns, cartridges, cash and clothing up for grabs. The 150 bird course is new for this year, with more than half taking place over virgin ground, so places have been snapped up quickly. Check the remaining availability at theclayshootingcompany.com, then get yourself down to Windrush Shooting Ground. The missing gun crime statistics from Scotland have been released. And the big news is that there's no news. Air gun and firearms crime remains low, down 73% from its peak in 2006. Air gun crime accounts for just 0.06% of all crime, but Scottish politicians are pressing ahead with air gun licensing. Basque said air gun shooting is a low-risk, low-cost sport and a licensing system was disproportionate and unnecessary. Build-up has officially begun to this year's CLA Game Fair. Organisers have told us that they're now on site at Harewood House and are cutting grass like mad. As well as the usual attractions including Gunmakers Row and the main arena, they're preparing a new picnic lawn overlooking the house. Get yourself to the game fair for the best possible price by booking an advance ticket now. The government says it'll keep its promise to push through repeal of the Hunting Act. During questions in the House of Commons, Environment Secretary Liz Truss said there would be a free vote with the government bill in government time. The magic number needed to achieve repeal is 286 MPs. That means repeal will go through if fewer than 45 Conservative MPs rebel against it. Demand for game meat is set to grow and grow. That's the word from consumer research agency Mintel, which includes game meat in its list of the top 50 markets around the world. Game meat consumption grew by 9% last year, and it's reckoned it could grow a lot more in the years to come. This bucks an overall trend that's seen demand for red meat drop, and it could be good news for stalkers and shoots. Did you know that the government's been sitting on a game bird study for three years? DEFRA commissioned research in 2009, entitled Study to Determine Whether Cage-Based Breeding Can Meet the Needs of Game Birds, and if not, to Identify Best Practice. It was concluded in 2012, but has not been published. Basque said it was now time for the government to release it. Keep up with all your game news in iShoot magazine. And don't forget, it's less than seven weeks until the CLA Game Fair. Save money on tickets by buying online now. That was the Shooting Show News. Well, that's it for this week. Thanks for watching. Please like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. And if you're not a member of Basque, it's time to join now. Basque, looking after your sport, looking after you. This has been The Shooting Show.